Did you play it all on the album? No. How did that sort of uh, get set up to Taj ask you to do it? Well, yeah, it's a kind of just uh, took a flight one five, you know. Started some of my album. And then somebody was sick. I sent him a record. And uh, first time he was uh, a sleeve driver. Did you enjoy working with him? Yeah, very fun. Felt the album was successful. Huh? You felt the album turned out the way. I don't, you know, I don't know what the scene is. I don't remember what I thought about it, but I know where it really was. Good. Okay, what relationship do you see between uh, reggae music and uh, Rasta music of use and Rasta meetings? A lot of music starts from music, drums. Yeah. You know? And you see that, I don't know about it. I talk about re re Rasta music. can the lyrics, so I did a lot in here. The lyrics. But God, you know, every song is aside. We well, have lyrics now, we only mean, we don't mean nothing, we only mean kicks in the head. We have other lyrics now, we really mean something to our delight. But that's the thing, the good song and the bad song. You know, we have a good song and a bad song. So in the music, man, if it's a deal with the right, with, the, with, with the righteousness, and you can say Rasta music. If that deal with the you can say the other music. Yeah, that's what we still out, still out, still music. Oh, what instruments are used uh, at Rasta Meetings besides the basic three drum set of the account? Any other instruments used or just the drum? Yeah, you can use an instrument, yeah. You know what I mean? But drums is not in the right thing. Do many different instruments get used or very rarely? Mm -hmm. Just drums. Okay. What, um, what are the rhythms like in uh, the Rasta cult music? Are they faster than reggae? Are they... No. More laid back. More laid back. You know, it, it, it's very, it's thing called it's feeling, you know. A guy will come and start feeling fast. But the thing we've got is a repeat, you know, where the guy will meet up, people will repeat, you know. Are the melodies and the chants fixed, or are they sort of uh, varied upon and improvised? Mm -hmm. The melodies and the rest of the chants, are they fixed, or are they sort of varied upon and improvised by the people singing? <laughs> yeah, and it's... By something I'm putting... Yeah, because sometimes you have a man who has seen it, and he's seen it all the time, and yeah. everybody knows about this thing about time, you know. And you have a man who has seen it all the time, and he's seen it all the time, and he's seen it all the time. So somehow you have a catch in time, and yeah. because you don't know where you are, but you know, you know the kind of time, and you know. <laughs> there are different places, you know. Maybe you have a flag, one, two, three, four. Uh, you come out on the 6th uh, one and come again. Right. You know, dangerous. <laughs> Still getting it across? Yeah, right? of course. Long as these are participating the singing. Do the, do the hymns and the chants and rest of do they change regularly or the new ones? Or is it basically a fix? Basically just the right songs and good words and bad bitch. And some machines. Man, just being just to just so most of the songs are pretty set. Most of the, no, set. Like. Yeah. I know, I can tell you what. Yeah, the melody is set. The melody is from. Like from long time. The melodies are them songs. But the words are them. Kind of. Cold, I don't really like, you know. I mean, the melody is like an eye. See reggae is being influenced at all by uh, Kamina, Big Drum, or Burra dances? Do you see reggae is being influenced at all by Kamina or Big Drum or Burra dances? That
There's been a progression in uh, Jamaican pop music, I guess, since the 60s, from uh, Mento to Scott to Rocksteady, and then what we have now. How do you see, oh, this is sort of a long-winded question, but how do you see the music changing over those periods? When did you first start hearing those different names used? Well, the music changed from Scott to Rocksteady. Domino brand of things with Calypso. And with the fast Domino influence coming in, it became more. Obviously the bass line is important in shaping the song. Uh, 
ጥሩም ያባ as a songwriter, when you write the songs, um, you know, you have your lyrics and you have your chord changes. Do you also write the bass line or is that completely up the family line? When you come into the studio and play yeah, yeah, I'm on take care. Sort of a switch to reggae? Hmm? When you got into sort of pattern based playing? Where are you? Well, I think you have a guy in our corner, you know, he's on brand in Jazz River. He needs to play the hand. The string bass yeah. and a bit George Rivers? What year was that? What yeah, right, it's a jacket. It's a jacket, a jacket for country or rock steady. My family man country or reggae. It's like, you know, so you get the difference. Jackie country or rock steady. Family man country or reggae. What, what year was it sort of happening that you're switching from this? Yeah, How long did you say you had upset us? Right, right. Mm. Yeah, that was family. Well, family man was with them, so it's Carly, right? And Carly. Right. Was, yeah. was Wire with them, too? Or? No, the man in Glenn. When did, uh, obviously, reggae one trade is the bass guitar, a lot of times doubles with the, uh, you know, regular guitar, which is playing, you know, on its bottom strings, you play the same line in unison. Yeah. When did that start happening? In that mess that happened. I don't even know if it's About three years maybe? 72? Yeah, from the commitment from Catch a Fire. Yeah, because you were doing that on Catch a Fire, it's, but it wasn't being done before on your earlier Tough Gone. Catch a Fire, I understand. Why, why was there a move towards playing that? I love you, so it's good. It's more forceful. Yeah. I heard the, I forget where, it might have been in an interview with yourself, or maybe it was with Toots, uh, talking about the reggae rhythm guitar style, which sort of muffled, sort of cuffed, attributing to a cat named Rickabaka or something, yeah. played in the streets. Do you know anything about that? Rickabaka. Yeah, no, I'm afraid that. Yeah, I'm afraid that. Well, maybe. I don't know for sure. Any idea? I don't know for sure if he's in I mean, everybody said that. They didn't tell me that it's still. But I never even know Rekha Black is too good, you know. Who I know was Ox. Ox? Ox. Who? Brian Ox. And then Reggie. You know. And everybody said, they really have to play them, try them, get some money. And you can't, you know, I'll get the good news. They'll play the music itself. They start getting the music when they want. Because, you know. Some musicians are the top of them. You are the cancer musician, please. And say so that's what you want, that's what you hear. You want to play with him here. You know? <laughs> when did you uh when did you first start started hearing that rhythm? Uh, the, the cuff rhythm guitar, the sort of muffled rhythm guitar sound. Yeah. When did you first start hearing Jamaica sort of uh, I don't know how to describe it, cuff or muffled rhythm sound. Of the rhythm guitar. Well, it's a long time the guitar I played away, really, you know. Long time, from the scad years. Right, it's been sounding that way all the way up. Chop, 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 it's a long time there. Well, it's, it's just the, the mood here. It's the chop, 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 you know, because it's right down. <laughs> okay, the drum style sort of up has developed over the years, whereas the drummer in some ways is doing less and less, very sparse. You know, it's a bass drummer, 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 it's a bass drumm
next to no use of the top symbols of the tom. Gums is the the one drop. Right, right. Because everybody has split. I'm going to do lots of things on it. What we want is to do the one for music. This album, that 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 that album, 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 that you know, then all the other things make sense. But if everybody just are going mad, all everybody are mad, then you know, you have no rules. Confusion. I noticed on Rastaman vibrations and actually a lot of stuff coming out of Jamaica in the last couple of years that the uh, hi hat in the drum set's being mixed really high. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be like the you know the main drum sound, like the master drummer. Why is that so? Uh, drummer never do that, you know. Okay, where where do you feel the time in reggae? Do you feel it in the bass or do you feel it in the drum? Or the what? The time feel, the rhythm feel. Where as a singer are you feeling? Plenty of people come from the base of the drum. But everything has to be there. You know? Everything has to be there. The whole thing put together. And to be there, bro. You can get the right feel. The drum on the base is really really bad. The whole time it starts from. I was thinking specifically, you know, the song Stop Left Train from uh, the Catch a Fire album. There's, yeah. a, there's a break in the middle where Carly completely cuts out. And uh, yet the rest of the band's going it's still. It's incredible. It's slow, but it's in, in perfect time. It's completely there. And I was wondering well, whether you're feeling the time in the bass, or whether Carly had played through that but was mixed out in the mixing session, or. No, something happened with the feeling. I'm not confident. I'm not feeling. It you know, depends on the one. I'm not feeling. I don't know why you're feeling this. And you don't want to do nothing else more than what you're playing because you're comfortable. You know? You said that you're going to have the right one to fire. You know? No, it looks like, it's like it's incredible. You know? I don't think you find a lot of American or Canadian musicians who could uh, be playing a song that slowly and then have a break with the drums cutting out and keep time still that well. Yeah. You know, the slower you do it, the harder it is to keep. Mm. There's, there's sort of two basic rhythms, huh? Or, the rhythmic grids that are used in reggae is sort of a straight eighth note thing, and it's more a loping feel. Like one foundation, it starts with the organ bit, and you know, straight eighths, and then it goes into the loping sort of. Well, that's a different sound, you know, and different. That's a guitar touch, being like, being musical, and just in my music, I guess. You know, and all we want is to play the has uh, those two different, uh, that, that thing also happens, I believe, in No More Trouble, the same sort of things that opens in straight eights and then it goes into a loping feel. Uh, yeah. It, so I was wondering uh, whether that had been happening in Jamaica for a long time or whether it was sort of like a recent development using both sort of uh, rhythm ideas, like most musics use one or the other. Jazz uses a loping sort of triplet thing, whereas uh, rock. No, that thing is just restarting. Everybody just stays on both, you know. When we know the music, um, all the feelings go down. That's why we love it so much. You can be playing reggae and you break it out in our funk. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can break it out. Anyway you want to carry, you can carry it. And then bring it back to reggae. It's when you bring it back to reggae. It more, it more, you know, have a different feel more than you that funk. I reggae more new than funk, you know. And she did it in a funk, it more whole back right now. Funk ago. So we'll go. So it's all about being a different thing. What's in the template for? You can sort of go in and out of the different styles in that way. Yeah. It's never going to get boring. Yeah. That way it's never going to get boring. You've got a lot of freedom there. Yeah. Right away, you're not going to carry it. How often do the whalers rehearse? Uh, 
We were all 70 aliens. In fact, I got rid of that tour, you know, we started very odd, very good aliens. For about two weeks, then, for the tour? Uh, two, four weeks, I don't know, sometimes. What about studio sessions? Do you see going cold? And then what about the sound in the studio? Do you usually rehearse it pretty well before you go sometimes in? Sometimes I rehearse them, sometimes. I mean, sometimes I'll get some in the studio. And I rest, it's going for the studio. Do you prefer it one way or the other, or is it just... Any way it goes, I don't know. Okay, what do you think of the Jamaican Song Festival? Uh, I think I... Yeah, I'm a part of it. Toots has taken part of it many times. He's actually won, I guess, three different years. And that's one... Well, that is. Or I got something in. Or I got something in, I was going on. I did have a trick, you know. I don't know, it doesn't take so much for me to see in person, she hear it. They all come from his record scenes. It just that we more record company and then we did it, any class of great. But if we move it for Byron Lee, then, you know, it's not, it's Byron Lee. Byron Lee's on a promotion on TV, then, everything run on a band of ways, you know. That's interesting. I was wondering whether it was sort of uh, that way. But I mean, yeah, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Cause we know guys who win and we know people who but who should have win and they don't win. They don't know how well it's true. Money that the size is on the people. It's a real sass game. It's a real sass game. You know, the world about cars, they don't let you ass. Okay, what do you think of Swing? Well, Swing. Jamaican reggae paper. Swing? Yeah. Well, Swing, all right. Uh, I believe so. I can't find it up here anymore, but I'm uh, I'm starting to write letters up to your advice. Yeah, they did a, they did a couple of pieces on you actually last year. I remember you did an yeah. interview with them after the summer too. Yeah. Have there been any particular articles in uh, North America or England that have particularly stood out that you've been you thought have been good pieces on reggae or good pieces on yourself? Well. Sometimes you have some good people, sometimes you have some guys who write things, I don't know where they come from, or they get to write certain things, I mean, they're biased, you know, they're not really a help the situation. Talking about wax in the hair and that Yeah, bullshit, right? I mean, them guys are some of the things, you know what I mean? I mean, we couldn't sit in the witness door and talk to a guy who was supposed to be an intellect. So when the poet, they write all the bag of shit. <laughs> you know, you can't understand it, that's why the proper don't talk to nobody. Because if, if when we talk to you, if, uh, you can't go say that. We talk to you as a virgin, and then we write, we write like we just, we was just a, st a, a, a statue to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, personally, dig that, I'm the one of that, you know what I mean? <laughs> there have been any particular writers or articles that you've thought have been justice and have been good pieces? Well, I don't really remember them, you know, but I have a couple of pieces that I yeah. sometimes my friend. But maybe when we were that we get it published, it's the song that we have found every guy never made it published neither, you know. Not every time you're gonna come through the box we you can <laughs> You still own your own record store in Jamaica? Maybe yeah, I still have it down there, but it's not a record store that much. I have a little guy who Politics get too stinking in Jamaica now. We can't have some shit in terms of the politician around that thing, you know, you know. We can't make him do that. So, uh, how, did, how does that really, was, how do the politicians really affect your record store? I think. Well, it's business, you know, and we'll go find it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you collecting royalties off them or are they coming around? I collect a penny royalties from the G, from that, you know. But you know, I try to get a lot of collecting cars and buy a car store or something. I mean, they can't tease, they're still at the.
How much in those days when Cox and Dodd and uh, Duke Reed and Lee Perry were sort of running everything as producers, how much did they control the final sound and the final output, and how much did they do the musicians have? Well, usually then it was not Would they sort of do a trip of telling, you know, exactly what to play and how to play it and when, or was it still basically up to the musicians? Eh? Were the producers then doing a trip of, you know, telling who to play what and how to play it and when, or did they just sort of... The musicians play. Um, guys don't know about music. Still, I'm not hearing, you know, in the mic. Sometimes. What's been happening with your passport? I hear the government in Jamaica is really not giving you the runaround. No. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the Rastafari Brethren. I got very, very interested in the Rastafarians through your music and because of you, specifically. And I tried this year to do a fair bit of research. Uh, you know, of everything that's been written about them, and so many things I found were so biased and so, you know, just obviously written from a bizarre point of view. I thought I'd ask you a few questions. How do most Rastas view the Ethiopian National Church in Jamaica? Um, Was not the Ethiopian National Church supposed to be a little different than, uh, than sort of the British colonial churches that had existed? Yeah. But it still wasn't much. It's not really a church, man. It's not really a church, man. That's what religion's all about. Yeah. I mean, inside <laughs> the church is just an area where to get yeah, collected. You know what I mean? God inside of you, man. And then you want to talk to God, man. And God, you don't have to talk to the guy. And you want to talk to God, too. God inside of you, you don't need to talk to him. Yeah. Is there much of a split uh, in the Rastafarian Brethren between those people? I sort of heard something referred to as a statical church split where people who are into Rastafarian... Well, the government, you know, otherwise they never tried to certain things. Like for instance, there's a guy, you know, in short, in short, a white man say must like a black man, and sure the black man say must like a white man. As a devil. We did the fine thing, I come together, you know, and you come together. We really, don't want to try, you know, but if we make him do it, then it's our fault, because he, he can't really do it of himself, but he can't want to try. Just like the church, you know, and we, you know, you have, you have some views over there. The church is this, and you have some views over there. The organization is that. So you find the church and the organization never come together. If you call, if the, the members of the people believe in the church thing, you know what I mean? I mean, think people should come together, man, and solve the, solve the problem of the world. Because, you know, people live in the world. Why? So why it and hard, but you know, it's have to be done. Because you have to do it. Well, the only way it's going to happen yeah, is you it? have to do it. And the only way it can't be the people who control the media to send out the right message that the people who out there were in the You know what I mean? Because the media control them. You know? So I'm saying if you write, maybe if you write um, a article, yeah, and you reveal the whole truth, maybe I'm the one you publish it. You get know, problems all the way down the line. The devil just inspired the guy on the stream and said, No, you can't publish this. You know what I mean? You just don't like the article. And you can't find out why you don't like the article, but it's just the devil influence and say, hey, You must publish that because it will bring the people together. And if you bring the people together, then the devil will have more power.
definition of that, of Africanizing Jamaica, as opposed to going back to Africa, since most people are not going to be able to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Is there sort of a thing happening where a lot of Rastafarian brethren are redefining the idea of repatriation and Africanizing Jamaica, and it bring their culture there, since the physical reality of getting to Jamaica is becoming harder and harder, money-wise. Okay, that's yeah, that's sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? First time we leave Africa, it never cost us money. That's for sure. You know? And right now, they have more, they have better equipment right now, Carlos. We're the best ships now. First time we start to roll that shit from Africa. <laughs> 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 they got steamships and all them ships and planes now. They can carry us home here easy, man. No problem. What you see, it's a people to interact there. It's a people, you know. The people, they have the, 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 the only control, they have the control, yeah. It's the people. But I come, you want Africa, I mean, you say, you want Africa. Nobody else won't come and me alone and go. I have to live with me, I have to live my life, I know we can't live some, something else, we can't live it. I thought of something, I know, I think it hurts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, have you thought specifically of maybe moving to Africa yourself? Yeah. Have, you, have you and the band, the Whalers, uh, thought specifically of moving to Africa? Well, yeah, because I was supposed to move anywhere in the world, so I want to move. Like, like, two travel for no snow, you know? Oh, nice to spend nine months, six months in a journey, you know? And you figure if you spend that six months, you're not easy to work there. You're right, different sounds. Right, for sure, wherever you are is going to influence what yeah. you write. So it's a reason because it's Jamaica, you know, it's a move on that side of the Get all sorts of different uh, ideas yeah, out there. Yeah, Do you write? I believe in the different style of people. Yeah, but I just sing different songs. Come to ever sing what people call political songs, you know. Because we don't really want to sing political songs, but all, all every song we sing must be a political song. Most of the time, the time you sing song with everybody up, man, uh, and it's a happy song. It's mm-hmm. a political song, it's a happy song. People come together already, that means you need a more political song. And we're going to eat it over, we can't go and sing political song. You know, we're going to sing. That's kind of over here, freedom, freedom song, how nice it is to be free. You know? <laughs> Burning Spears, the nice, that's, um, Third, uh, third yeah, World. Th- well, it's Spears, no, it's no, Slavery Days is the Burning Spears song. Third yeah. World. You've heard yeah. the Third World album? Yeah. Freedom song, beautiful track. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I wanted to just do a bit of uh, some of the early history of the band. It's sort of a basic outline history. In fact, I wrote Island out of thing of dates and stuff, but uh, there's so much that's sort of been confused, and some of the articles that have been written on you think, you know, totally bizarre, some of the facts they have. So I was wondering if we could uh, talk about some of the early days, I wanted specifically to know when uh, yourself, P. 
Peter Thomas, Buddy Livingston, Beverly Kelso, and Junior Braithwaite. 1962, I was just a tree, you know, first in trouble in 1960. You recorded your first stuff in 61. And then, the, well, you as a solo recorded three songs in 61. And then, uh, would you say the next year in 62, you got the band together as a singing group? That's my band. Well, just the singing group. Yeah. Why? What made you decide you wanted to uh, stop going solo, which you had for three songs, Judge Not, One Look Up, and, uh... It is a man that I just don't know who's playing. It's me and his friends, you know. You know? It's like being if you're going to the street, I'm going to go to the street. It's going to be like, it's like when you're my friend, going to the street, and then you talk, and then you... That means if you're a sing, you don't want me alone to sing, you're not that individualist. So it's a case that you had a lot of friends together and it's just a matter of... Yeah, man. Is Beverly Kelso and Junior Braithwaite an integral part of the band? I mean, what part of the singing group? Uh -huh. Were Beverly Kelso, Kelso and Junior Braithwaite part of the group or were they the sort of people who sometimes sing? No, they were part of the group at the time, but... Five of you, only how many is no, because five of them is just a better than five of them. Sometimes it's difficult, and sometimes it's hard to talk to all of them. And sometimes nobody's like that, and you know what I mean? I find the easiest way, when Junior leaves, he's his team or something, three months later on, and then, I don't think that's so Junior left first, and then Beverly sort of exited it after that. Yeah. There was a girl who was first to be by the name of Cherry. Was she ever part of the band, or who is yeah, she? Yeah, she was a black girl. She was a black girl. She was a really high. Really? Higher than any of the three? What was her last name? Yeah, when did uh, when did those people leave? When did Junior, Beverly, and Cherry all leave? Yeah. What year? Around sixty-six. Yeah, it was. You know, kind of leave when I leave to go to the mother. How much of an influence was Joe Higgs on the band at the time? Yeah, well, that's a great man. He's a very kind street. Really? He gave me some more love. Did he uh, have a lot? Did he help you a lot in making your home? Yeah. You come to the you in your first uh, North American tour. Yeah. It was. <laughs> was he opening up for you, or was it he part of the yeah, band? Do a lot of his tunes besides your own tunes? There's been three sort of names. There's, of course, been the Whalers, there's been Whaling Root Boys. So it's always just been the Whalers. It's also a time when it was referred to as the Whaling Root Boys. It was Root Boys, it was a song. How often did the band perform back in those early days when you were five? about six times a year then. There was no, no opportunity for the band to play regularly. Yeah, but you know, you know, like, work too regularly, you know. It's over exposure and the food. Did you ever play outside of Jamaica at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay, in 66, uh, you, you for about three years sort of semi-retired semi to St. Anne. 
Why have the demand to stop recording during those years? What's that happening with you? Well, you know, you can't just go on for it, let's say, yeah, get first music, come again, you know, just live street life. But I am cool out here, make it blow out here, I think more music than more. Yeah, get bored, like that. Were you a Rasta man at that time, or during that yeah, period? Yeah, Rasta man. When did you, uh, when did you get into the I didn't mean it that way, I meant when you sort of started realizing it was there and identifying it was there and becoming yeah. what? When you started realizing it was, you know, there and identifying was it was that uh, part of the reason for your sort of hibernation for those three years starting getting out of the music industry.
It's a lot different. What's yeah. going on? So sometimes you can't feel like you don't want to do this. And you, you don't want to do this, you know. It's free, you know what I mean? She's not going to bother with it. Nobody can say whether it's yes, you have to have this because we don't have to know. I'm not going to. But if you didn't want to do it, you should like that. It's a case of finding a Peter didn't really want it to. Didn't really want to hit America, is that what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is that I never really wanted to do it. I didn't want to do it. Yet. And so that's sort of are they are they still together in Jamaica? Are they still recording together, or are they just doing single no, stuff? Kind of, um, no, kind of CDs now. Is that Virgin? Huh? Virgin Records. No, I think it's CDs. Yeah, three CDs. Yeah. yeah. What's funny? Do they any recording at all? Yeah, one of them. Oh, who's that for? Is that for Tough Gun or for? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's Tough Gun. Can I make you a room? Yeah. Can I make the service here? You want me to make the service? Is it? Yeah, well, anyway. Yeah. Okay? Okay, Tudor sort of left and joined in that period, too. Okay. Yeah, what was happening there? Well, I just didn't want to talk about that. You see, all the musicians broke and broke. Broke. Right around. Right. Right around, you know? So you find, at times, you have a talk and sometimes you have a talk around. Before that one. More experience, right? It's not both young, but I have more experience. You know? So that that total is a group. But total. I have to be like, but we at first, you know. And then we can make practice. Okay. Practice How'd you go about uh, recruiting your replacements for the way that this time you picked up Al Anderson? Yeah. Well, it was just that, you see. The music needs. Music really needs something, music really needs some like something of a punch up, right? Like you know, good guitar. We have got up with the final good guitar in Jamaica. But then about the thing that I would need all. Right. And you know, we move together and see. And then the double guitar is a really neat, you know. Had you thought of uh, maybe using Wayne Perkins? He did some overdubbing on Bernie? Yeah. Don't you know that's what regular music, you know? Like, you understand the thing. You can play whatever you want to play on the radio, you know? Well, I understand that now, you know. Yeah, I know. Earl Turner Smith. Earl, Earl, Earl. Earl Smith. Earl Smith. Earl Smith. And Donna, Donna, you know? Right. Okay, did you see uh, did you see Al Anderson was changing the reggae guitar style very much when he was joining the band? It was quite quite a difference on that. He dread from your previous albums, the guitar work, of course. Well, I don't want to say it. Um, I'll I'm not the change. Well, just that you couldn't really put reggae music in that type of band. Like, the next album, the next album, the next album. You felt it was too much going on all at once. I was there, the sound acoustic, you know. Or she didn't come back up sound like acoustic. After that goes, she wanted them to hear it. The music was called acoustic music. Like, sound acoustic, you know. Right. Did Al, did Al uh, sort of leave the band, or did you sort of just talk it over and decide you didn't want that much happening on I mean, you? You don't want that sort of sound happening on the new album. Well, I had some days and days and I mean, you know, I'm just going to leave the program. During that time on the record, Chris Blackley was to have some business going on and stuff, but and then um, we couldn't get the business straight enough by the time we had to be able to restart the unit. It's just a matter of uh, scheduling and not being able to get things yeah. together. Okay then. Natty Dread represented a, uh, a fairly big change in uh, reggae albums. You had a lot of horn work on there, and of course the addition of the I3s. Uh, who are the horn musicians on the album? Yeah. 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 Ye
just his back up here. Why, why, why did you decide you wanted to use so much horns in the album? Was it a conscious decision or is it just something that sort of happened? No, it's just that, um, okay, it's a Johnny Gallagher smart piece. Right. Like in 1960, you saw some runs, one of those that were, it's tough in other words. Like, you can read the word Dizzy Gillespie and all them guys. Right, right. We don't record from most of them shit, them guys are bad. So, the interest of the music to move from Jamaica with them guys and go somewhere else. And that good for the music, and they set up the real good music, and big, big guys, and where we hear the music. And it was like, hard, it was big, you know, and it was him. So during the children guys leave, now we could get good hands again. So the time for seven then we would use hands, but we could have a musician, and we would not be able to the right musician. You know, because you have ropes, right. and you have leaves, and you have branches. I need a roof. If you can't get a roof, you can't get no You gotta get it all the way up. Yeah, I got the roof. I'm surprised that Don Drummond didn't inspire a lot of Jamaicans to, you know, start yeah, really getting the horn work. Yeah, but you get penalized because you lock up a trinity and you're not Right, right. There's not too much opportunity to play. If you can't play music, man, the hardest thing is to get music. If you can't play guitar, the hardest thing is to buy a guitar. It costs so much to buy a guitar, you know? Then it costs so much to buy a hand. Which is even yeah, more. There was a long time, uh, a long time when the whalers were just a vocal group before yeah. you started getting into it. Was that a case of getting the bread together to buy them? Yeah, it's a case of like that, you know? I mean, it's just like, I don't know. It makes us such a control place that that time you have bands out there, you know? You never think more to get instruments, you never think more that, you think more singing because singing is not a far away, especially when you think of the harmony. Right, right. You know, you have always with them, that, that means sometimes you just not sing it, you know. Well, I'm not singing now, well, too, you know, we write some more songs and find that. I don't write songs the way we want to do them, we want to do them, we want to do them with other musicians. The songs slightly change. Because of the other musicians in front. Yeah, they had a musician. So he said, no, I don't feel that it's right. I don't want to do the music how I want to do it. We always feel it. We always feel like it's right. And so we start learning to play it. You know, and get in and be cast and by. Right, and get them to join you. Yeah, they got a group together. That makes much more sense, having complete control. That's why you got into producing, too. That's all you can, yeah, that's all you can. Sometimes they can be the music if you can if you don't have the music, you know what I mean? You do that thing and then that different one. You have to control the music, so we will work this. And then what type of music you can what type of music you want. Who like that one, you know what I mean? Right. Okay. <laughs> Who played harp on uh, uh, Rebel Music? Uh, I like a guy named Lee Jaffe. Oh yeah? Okay, I was just wondering if it was you because of course it wasn't credited. It's really wild heart playing too. Yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of fun. Yeah. Who wrote Them Valley Full? I noticed on the live album it was credited to. Well, I don't remember who wrote it, you know. It was a Legon quote, I don't remember who wrote it, you know. It wasn't your song though, eh? No, it was like, I remember them and then wild English, you know. The years I've been singing my own song, so. I think I'm not going to get some other people a chance sometimes. Huh? Sure, it's a band. <laughs> it's not just one person, right? Yeah. Is there, a lot of, is there a lot of collective writing among the group? Is there a lot of cases where you'll have sort of this... Sometimes I'm going to write. You can write, you know. So, and yeah, everybody writes that. Do you everybody. do? Do you do a lot of writing together? Or is it mainly just separate stuff and then bringing it in and then working it? Well, no, we don't, I don't, we don't really write together plenty. Sometimes it comes together. Right. You used to, uh, when Bunny and Peter were in the band like back in the 60s, you used to use them sometimes, all three of you writing, didn't you? Yes, I'm writing, yeah, actually. When you write, what usually comes first? Do you usually start with words or do you usually start with a music idea and try to fit it together? Or? Well, it's like, you never can tell what might happen, you know? 
So it can work either way. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really go for it. Yeah, he kind of Sometimes, but someday you'll get the sun more serious too. But some support it. Uh, as most sun as I write, and that half the sun will come to me. It's so much sun, some people there for us than me. Yeah. Well, we have time to get it down. Best time to do it. Never had a chance, right? Yeah. Come on, get in there, baby. Yeah. Floating around. Yeah, it's not a bad. Who is. Who is Lee Ford? He wrote a lot of tunes on the new album. Lee Ford. This is where they used to have growth, they changed stuff, you know? Really? And then it worked together. Uh, right, so I was in six, you know? I think it's still got some change. Does he play at all? Yeah, he plays at all. Does he play in a band at all? Does he have recorded? Uh, uh, did he write No Woman, No Cry, or did you yourself? Vincent Boy. Yeah, yeah, I'm credited on the single, interestingly enough, to you, and then on the album they put it to him, so kind of, kind of weird. Last year when you toured, there was a big change in in the approach and the whole style when the Wailers came out. Gone was the way you used to open your shows with the rest of chants and the rest of drumming, and it was a much more tightly structured show. Uh, last summer's tour. Yeah, this album did okay. It was on, okay. on okay. Thank you. This is the last one. Oh, the show, the rest of the that wasn't last year, that was before. I was saying there was a big change. It was a much more tightly structured show. It's much, you know, your opening was Trenchtown Rock and it was oh. more straight, uh, more, I guess, North American or oriented show. Yeah, but for now, I'm trying to. Good. 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 No, no, that's not even, 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 I've gone already. Breathe new life and... Yeah, man. So, a living, a living thing. <laughs> <laughs> Got to grow up. Were the shows here much different from the type of shows you've done in Jamaica? Sure, yeah. Um, last summer? You know. It's something I've got in the Jamaica. Um, Sound-wise, you know. Sometimes you can't get the right sound in the Jamaica. Equipment? Yeah, equipment. So we can realize that you know, uh, yeah, somebody have a great guarantee. But the guys don't keep showing sure, all them guys know what the PA system is, and they'll pick up and speak on the end. Sometimes you have a great show, but sometimes you know, we be work out. So everything all right, you know. People don't realize there's not really music when you do that much. We're feeling plenty of music. We have a message. And yeah, there's a feeling that comes yeah. across. It's not just well, it's some folk and some rock. Right, right. It's there it came. The reason is, the reason is, you know. Where else have you toured besides England, Canada, and the States? Have you played any other countries outside of there? No, not yet. Have you thought of, uh, have you yeah, thought I'm of... Yeah, I'm going to Germany. Really? I even went there in Japan. Africa, yeah. How popular is uh, reggae music in the other islands besides Jamaica? Eh? How popular is reggae music in the other islands besides Jamaica and the other West Indian islands? Well, yeah, reggae music really popular in the other islands. Is that just a recent thing or has it been going on the whole time? Eh? Is it just recently that reggae has become that popular in the other islands or has that been going on for a long, long time? It's been going on, but you know. The wrong people used to have reggae in control. 
people like Cox on Dodd and yeah, Lee Perry. I don't you know, I don't want to say that there are um, people, but you know, you know, I stand to that there are um, still a lot of wheelers during that time, but there were people, there were the people get the chance, whereas Byron and John Lewis. Right, right. And they never worked at the cars, and um, they talent was not talented, it was just that they knew Byron and John Lewis. They were the contacts, so they can come up and... That's what we want the music for, such a long time, because I have guys who want to play music. The money, you know, the money part of the music. One to get across something. Yes, you just come, you get the money first and then you play. You don't pretend you get the money. Them guys who get the money first and then they play, they can't understand what they're really trying to say. You know, and I really do. You know, I'm creating some music. I'm just saying, them guys play people's songs, people's songs have been played already. Nothing new, you know. That's right. funny. They're the same people who also had control of the studio, Sandy. Yeah, the same point. Was it? That was it. <laughs> well, it seems to have changed, right? Byron Lee isn't popular up here. No, that that's why it's Bob Marley, Toots and the Maytals, and people like that. Yeah, first time people of Byron Lee. Have you had any feedback on it? Have you had any feedback at all from Africa? How big is reggae there? Do you have any idea? Yeah, reggae is really a good one. You know, reggae is really a touch on plenty of things. It's important music, but the music right, right. There's no way to play bad music. They don't say you play bad music because they can music all the time. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if somebody plays that thing while you're playing a scene, then someone foolish. But if you friends the man, if you choose to see and you choose to see, or play the scene, then you can bet you will lie. It's going to come through. That's it. You know, there's some music still, it's just that, nothing more than that. Is there much African popular music? Huh? Is there much African popular music in Jamaica? There's some over here, but not much where it uh, gets played on the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not much that much. Yeah, over there. Well, I can't play the music down there. I can't music, I can't play it. But, you know, um, Jamaica, you get music like we play in America. The Spanish Soul Station, then, and type of music that was reggae. I mean, like, Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye and the world, and then type of music. Right. And then, you know, the world of Paral being back there. Plus, reggae, and then the mad year. And what we do till you get to 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 middle class music, like Dean Martin and then guys. Then That's a whole other trip, though. Different thing. <laughs> That's what, different thing. I don't think you're sitting back and listening to Dean Martin. I <laughs> know, <laughs> I certainly am not. <laughs> okay, last year you did a. Uh, you made an appearance in the Manhattan Transfer Summer Show. You did two songs from the Kinky Reggae was there. What sort of happened with that? I hear it was completely messed up beginning to end. Well, I don't know, but you know what I feel? I feel like I'm gonna, um, I mean, you know, people now just do some good. Just make it just come right to the box. Like, somebody must try to stop you one at a time. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, we it don't work. You know, let's go through the box so easy and come right to you and nobody ever stop you. Yeah. Uh, we do a little transfer and I never really feel it the time in my day because I never completely never feel like the right shoe to me. You ain't comfortable with it. So I never feel like the right shoe. You know what I mean? Never really understand it. I would never really you know, I don't feel like the really I get the right thing. Because you know, reggae music is a music man. We can't call you from Canada because you work in a studio. And call you and tell you say you must come around get the sound together and not like that. If you have somebody who knows the song, who tells you what they want, and you get it. Different way you get the song, like right? what's the, what, when you hear it, the song that you used to. You know, I really get it, that different way. Really. Had you thought of maybe then using your own uh, people to handle the sound on on the show, or, you know, like avoiding the transfer people and just using your own people to take care of sound? And well, the sound. I said, I know not about it sometimes, I don't really good at it. Are you doing any TV this time around? If you do it, <laughs> take care of your own sound, don't let, uh, yeah. don't let them mess you around. Yeah, that's You've done a lot of Jamaican TV before. You did Saturday Night Sit-In more than once, and you did the Swing Christmas Spectacular, things like that. Uh, yeah. Was there much different in the setups, the way they handled you, the way the TV stations treated you? Yeah. 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 Y
They give you the nerves and you're afraid. The mind is so annoying. No, if I was a rat group, or American um, group, playing the American music, they're like, they're really good. When we're the Jamaica, after the Jamaica reggae, it's a direct, a different thing, you know what I mean? Just like a guy. Can't be a funky, but he can't be a reggae. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Whose decision was it to release the live album? Was it yours or Ireland? Or what? Whose decision was it to release the live album? Well, uh, live album record, you know, I don't know if you did it. England. Oh, yeah. But uh, did you want it out, or was it the case of Ireland decided to have that released, or how did that work? It was the first uh, first album that you didn't have a hand in the production with. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. Never knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> to you from all sides. Is it released in Jamaica or not? I don't know. It's released in Jamaica. No, no, no. I don't think so. Okay. You've become uh, quite an international star, obviously, over the last couple of years. And do you know Jeff Barnes? He's in New York. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying, he mentioned something about how you were no longer, you know, now you're becoming an international star. You were no longer sort of part of the Jamaican people. And he was saying that. I was wondering if that's sort of the case, or whether he was kind of outside of what he was talking about. Well, I'm not part of Jamaican politics. Huh? I'm not part of the system, the politics, the political system. But these are the people. I think uh, Jeff was talking about more root thing, more, you know, just the people on the street. No, root got far away, you know. Root got far away. You know where I'm dying, man. You know where I'm dying, man. I just look for um, Jamaican. You know, like that. Lively, I'll go to her. Yeah, it was a lively, you know, every year. Get around. Yeah, I know. Jamaican people are alone. I don't know all the people that are Jamaica that know that. There are people that are going to know that. You know? And you know, roots, man, roots they are about. Roots are the people, roots are the people of Jamaica. People root, the root. We are generation and family. I talk about from creation, when man first come from, when man first come back to earth. The root, the root, you know. I like my father, mother, my father, my father, brother, father, sister. Because all the way back. He was the great grandparents. So then we got that one. Straight up line. The man feels good with that. Okay, how, how, much, uh, how much bribery, how much payola goes on in Jamaica? With her, well, in I don't know, you know, but I have nothing plenty to my store, you know? You will have gone all about the world. Okay, how much uh, how much do you think I've heard a lot of weird things about what sort of happens with Jamaican uh, music industry? How much do you think promoters and DJs decide sort of what becomes a hit as opposed to the people? As opposed to the uh, Yeah, sometimes. Well I go what is that but people don't even need to buy sometimes. But sometimes I have a song where, where the DJ plays on the radio and not the people want it. Right. And who's him to play. But when I think about them, man, it's not, it's not plenty of people know about the music, man. You know? But them guys, uh, it's not them really. It's them at the hits, you know? Them know it, it's them can tell you. Uh, you know, I think it played 50 times. Just about to call it. It's gonna happen. Uh, going up his head. You know what I mean? And you start getting to like it. And we really never like it first. But we get a real country. You know what I'm saying? But the guy can be played this time. He played this time. And then he started. Uh, you know what I mean? Do the sound system set up still exist in Jamaica? Well, you play the sound system there, but dance was a popular life first, and you know, dance. It's more... Oh, I thought you stopped it. So it has stopped how long ago? 
Is there a lot more live music to replace it? Or is there a lot more live music with bands to replace that? Or is that still promising? Well, if you don't have that course, because I'm not talking about Jamaica, I'm not talking about Kingston, you know. We have other places in Jamaica, you know, Kingston, we think that we have to do much easier. We're not Kingston, no, we turn up the whole system and think, oh, you can match it up up there. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sad. I'm playing so much fun. Ah, the people read. Yeah. Not a special type of roots. Right. You know, it's kind of shit that you go up, so. No, you go up, go up, and then I get turned to you. Yeah, you go up, I don't turn to you. And this is why everybody, everybody be a special type of people. Right, right. Do pre-release and blank records still exist? Or is that sort of wiped out too? No, How long ago did that sort of end? Even before the sound system's finished? Yeah, well, everything finished right after the same time, like. About 71, 72? You know, right? How important is uh, religious and folk music in Jamaica? Is that yes. How important is religious and folk music in Jamaica? Does that sell at all? Or? Whatever it is. Uh, well, yeah, but you people, the religious people in Jamaica come by religious music, man. But you don't know about the Bible, you know. You don't know about you know, the church, but I want people to buy a church, you know. Well, there's religions outside of the established church. <laughs> Rasta. Well, everybody buy the Rasta ones, you know? And there's revivalists, and there's folkomania. No, 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 no. That's a record. What about folk music? Is there any folk music in Jamaica, or is that sort of a... Yeah, but yeah, folk music in Jamaica. Well, the music would dominate now is reggae music, you know? Rasta Man Vibration yeah. type of... Let me tell you, that the reggae music, uh, some funk, some soul. Yeah. When did you uh, go into the studio to start working in Rasta Man Vibration? Where? When and where? Uh, in Jamaica. We were in the RGS studio. In Jamaica, yeah. Oh, wait. When, 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 when? You know what I mean, Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Stand and stand on the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's here, but I don't remember what time. Do you know how, about how long you spent in the studio? Did the album take a long time to come together? Was it pretty quick? Or how that sort of happened? Yeah, but it never really comes together too quick. Take a time, you know. There's a lot of songs that you've mentioned in the last year or so in interviews. Uh, Crazy Ball has was one of them, but there's other things too, like Natural Mystic and... Yeah, that's how it never it. <laughs> did you record a lot of those things and then pare it down to the, what became the album, or did you just record? Well, I did a record, Natural Mystic, but I never really do it, um, I never do it, you know, in a right studio. But it's not two tracks, you know, just, you know. But during the time of the album, I'm going to get it. You know? Sounds like a great song. <laughs> well, the lyrics sound interesting. Yeah. This bit I'd heard about. The album was originally going to be called Jean Lives. Which of course was a single in Jamaica. Why did you decide to uh, change the title of the album and to take the song off the album? Rastaman Vibration. Rastaman Vibration was the first thing. Rastaman Vibration, I mean, Vibration. It's more of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's more of a song. Yeah, it's more of a song. Yeah, it's more of a Okay, you, you've now got your own recording studio, that's right? No. That's not completed yet in your house? No, I don't really, you know, I don't really just, you know, start building it now. Yeah. Well, everything is set up on team, but I don't really start pushing it again. That was, uh, you know, wonder you even use Harry J's for most of your albums. I figured you'd switch to your own studio for this album. I was sort of surprised when you still use Harry J's. Yeah. I was sort of surprised when you still use Harry J's studio for this album because I thought you'd be sort of moving more into your own. Yeah. Is there any reason you prefer Harry J's studio to some of the other Jamaican studios like Federal or? Is there any set? Is there a sound in the studio or? Well, yeah, yeah, they have yeah, the RJ album sound. Is there any particular, any 
particular you know way of describing the sound or why you prefer Harry J to the other stuff? Well, as far as the sound, is too much downtown. <laughs> Sort of a, everything else got rid of. Okay. Who the Cat Fit? It's a really nice song on the album. Yeah, that's great. That was an old that was an old single on Top Gun called Man to Man. Yeah. A long time ago. I own a lot of I own a lot of the old yeah. stuff uh, from Jamaica. Yeah, man. Sort of well. Originally, Man to Man on the single lease was credited to yourself and Lee Perry is writing it together? Yeah, but them guys, they uh, don't put it sometimes. Uh. Yeah, they did a video and go out and kind of write it and stuff, you know. And they said, come on, did it? And they said, come on, did it? And you don't mind, you have to go on with it. You know? So, so I don't really take certain things. Lee Perry then really didn't have much of a hand in it at all. Yeah, Lee Perry is a great guy to work with. I don't tell him good sometimes. And then I'm pretty sure he used to do the Kanka, Man to Man, right. Smart Axe, and some more. He did, well, Soul Rebel, Soul Revolution yeah. albums. Yeah, but the music there, the music there is not the right music. You know? The music there is a good approach. I mean, is that the right, is that the right, um, is that the right feel? Um, you have, uh, I don't think I'm going to do the right feel, you know what I mean? You want to leave her, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, kind of about my, you know, those albums. I do it, it's going to be right, 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 it's true when you redid some of those. I think we did even the studio kind of the, the type of balance in. We, uh, we got, I think we ended up doing almost two track studio. For both of them? Two tracks? Yeah, there's two tracks. You have a drum and bass and one. And you have uh, the other instruments and the other one. Really? Right, yeah. And say. So sort of limited? Yeah, but I almost need to fit the boy here, the right kind of You know, so the right kind of thing was like, you can't get no value with it. Same situation for the best of the Whalers album and the Whalers. Best of the Whalers. I want to say immediately, you know, we have done four tracks. I was doing a bad idea. Right, Studio One. You know, I was working on a heat track and I did a year on that. It was a 16 track. Nobody could do it. We needed a real long day to meet if you know what I mean. Well, you see, when it comes to producing uh, producing your albums in Ireland, instead of sending a live album, you yourself are taking care of most of the producing. I work with Chris Blackwell with the rest of the band. How much is it a collective thing with the band, or is it just mainly yourself who takes care of the whole band, or especially Aston Barrett? Yeah, he did a lot of the mixing. Yeah. I love you, man. And that's reggae music, you know, one man. You know, reggae music is a thing come together and put it and become a round ball. You can't be, you can't have a round ball and have somebody on the street. So, your friends say, it's really a um, kite round, you know. Right. You really have it together. Even in mixing, even the vibration we have. If you go to, if you, if you go to the studio and you don't carry the right, right vibration, not gonna happen. Get fucked. Right. Yeah, one man can do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's all of you that understand before you can start doing the right type of reggae music. But the Bible is one of the things people have learned. It's one of them type of things like a yogi music, you know. It's music, and it's all very music, and it's music for you. But, if you hit not together, not gonna then work. You're fucked up, because nobody will understand. You know, we're really have a... Yeah. Using your phrase in the ground. 
It's the same sort of thing then when it comes down to arranging the different songs. It's sort of a collective thing. Is it the same thing then with arranging the songs? Arranging the songs. Like, for instance, the Natty Dread Agna Horn tracks. Is that sort of a collective thing with the band, or is that. Well, sometimes, sometimes that is a man, one man's inspiration, like, from my yeah, band that day. Sometimes the music, the song like needs a man. You don't know when really. You don't hear hands, but you don't hear my hands really at the day. I mean, your hands, your hands, man, them. And then you hear them, you hear them, you hear them, you hear them, you hear something. I go into it, this way, you hear. Know. I think like, um, so just, you know. Is that probably the right the right the answer actually? Because you're the answer. How much, uh, just getting back to producing, how much compression limiting is done on the bass in reggae? Is there any done at all? Because you get an incredible bass sound that not very many. And where I found that you get it right. I mean, in Jamaica, you can get it easy, but well, you come up far enough. Ah, it's okay, it's just for me, man. You know, one of the two amplifiers for Axe, but... You know what I mean? I need a certain equipment. I can boost this up or down, whatever. Right. And do you know. Was it harder than in the earlier days to get that sound because you didn't have the equipment? In the earlier days? Yeah. In the earlier days, uh, Okay, you've been getting a little more into producing these days. I understand you've done an album with Martha Valle. Yeah, the Whalers. The Whalers played back up on the whole album. Yeah. When is that coming out? Is that already? That's on Sire up here. Is it? Is it on Tough Gun in Jamaica? Or is that? No, it was again Tough Gun in Jamaica. But um, I never got a chance to listen to it. But I had to bring it to America and mix it. And we were really, really always mixing it, you know. Really? So um, I never got a chance to listen to it. I never mix it right now. How did that sort of come about? Well. I was, I mean, Mark just told me about the place in New York one time, you know, and she wanted to see me and see. So, uh, so Jimmy goes to a camera, you know, go on down there, and work hard and just for a while, you know. Are you thinking of uh, branching out at all, maybe producing other artists, or at least for Tough Gone, or? I don't know, you know, I don't really, really think of that thing. Just draw a few of them. I don't think we're going to play here that night. <laughs> Did you enjoy doing the video? Yeah, so it's Tuesday night. Very nice uh, inspirational message here on the back of the album. Uh, when, the, when the music hits you. When the music hits you. Feel no pain, so hit me with music. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, actually. Trench Town Rock, it uh, first did me right around and made me decide that. I had to check this out a little further. That line is just uh, pretty devastating. Okay, it's pretty obvious what Rat Race is all about. Yeah. Yeah, is Michael Manley, did he uh, try again to use reggae music in his campaign? And uh, try to save... Well, reggae music is not in reggae music, but it's kind of... Because the only other start of... Jimmy right now. Yeah, guys, anything up to my mind and get caught in the right time. Right, right. Did he do the same trip he did last time about marching around with his rod, the rod of correction? Right? I don't know, you know. Because I read that, I don't know. I don't know, I hear him so much about election sometimes. I don't know when. One plan. Do you see uh, 
any hope uh, with either party for Jamaica at all? Is it kind of a completely... Um, do you see any hope with either party in Jamaica for uh, the people on the streets, the roof? Or is it still kind of... Uh, well, it is what it is. People need to know the truth, you know. Right. Someone's got to tell them the truth. You think well, you... the truth that I need to know. Yeah, the truth that keeps me in bondage. Right. Because I'm going to be honest with you, you know, what you make of it. We're right. Yeah, in Jamaica. Because I'm going to be in God. But people still don't know something to do about Jamaica, you know. But Jamaica care of, 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 um, a descendant, history, Africans who have come to Jamaica, I think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we get up and say that. No way that we keep your slaves. We want to go home. We want to go back home. Well, there's a problem with this guy who, who want to rule him. And, uh, so when this problem faces him, you know, that um, when he walks out, I mean, he's not just a guy, he's not just a guy. Somebody, his father went to his mother and bought us a baby, and he come from here, right? He's feeding him and he grew up from people, the things he got to see, and he grew up from Stephen, and he come up, like, educate himself, and he's educated to be a politician. You know, when he become a politician now, I don't know which direction I'm going after that, but all I know is that um, the people of Jamaica say Africa, or uh, whoever in Jamaica say Africa, this guy should not make it possible for them to go back to Africa, knowing the history of how the thing go, and knowing that the land is granted in Africa for whoever wanted to return from the West. Mm -hmm. Now, if we arrest the cause of problem to them in Jamaica, because we don't take part in political standing and we don't vote. Then I'm just saying we're to Africa. I mean, the years of work for Jamaicans have a big work in the year. And you take a step to come from, from Africa in Jamaica and been working there for a long, long period of time and we we'll never get no pay. Over 400 years. Yeah, and we don't get no pay. So all we have is to return, is to return to our own homeland. And this guy will grow like a baby, come up to two days. As he must be rude, I must, he must be, he must be a motorboat where, where, wherever I'm set. Me, he can't eat a half of a stir of things. Well, none of them, none of them don't want to say, well, then, let us go to some people, go to some people. Send these people home because they want to go home. And then people have to cast out because they want help. They don't want to send them home. So you know what I mean, I don't know what is going on. That is how I feel the people should have feel. And neither neither political figures trying to help them. And you know, everybody was trying to say, yeah, they must be a Jamaican and I'm working this part here yeah, next week. Next week I'll be in some house for living up. You know what I mean? The house never comes. Never comes. I mean, yeah, it might come, yes. It comes because they vote. And that means neither is a sure vote for that party. It's not going to be the people that are kill them. You know what I mean? So that's going to be one and 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 one. Have you ever thought of yourself as a, in the future maybe a political figure?